The Tom Woods Show, episode 1536. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. All right, I know the sound quality is terrible. I'm recording directly into my computer because I'm in Vienna. I don't have any of my recording equipment with me. But I thought for today's episode, I would share with you the brief acceptance speech I delivered upon receiving the 2019 Hayek Lifetime Achievement Award from the Austrian Economic Center here in Vienna. So that's what follows. And this was recorded on my smartphone. I'm sure there will be official audio available at some point, but I need to get an episode out here. I'm a five day a week podcaster, so I'm going to use what I have. So what you're about to hear are selections from the introduction of me and the speech conferring the award upon me by Ingo Friedrich, who is retired vice president of the European Parliament and president of the European Economic Senate. And he said some very nice things about me. His English is good, but maybe his delivery not exactly perfect, so it might be tricky sometimes. So we're just reproducing bits and pieces of it for you. And then you'll hear what I had to say. It was a very tight schedule, so I gave very brief remarks. And I hope you enjoy them. And I think that's all I have to say about this. Austrian Economic Center is here in Vienna. It's austriancenter.com if you're interested in visiting it online and finding out more about it. So having said that, I turn things over to Ingo Friedrich and enjoy. Tom is a senior fellow at the Mises Institute. You know this famous Austrian professor and the host of the Tom Woods Show a podcast hosting of more than 1,000 episodes with Bob, Bob Murphy. Where are you, Bob Murphy? We saw you in the afternoon. It was a super show between you two. And uh, he is regularly engaged in the noble fight against the economic thoughts is pushed by Paul Krugman. We know him all. Tom is a learned man. A bachelor degree in history from Harvard University, master's PhD from Columbia, and his contributions to the libertarian cause are immense. He is the author of 12 books. Most recently, the name of the book is Real Dissent, Libertarian Sets Fire to the Index Card of Allowable Opinion. Earlier, knowing that the 2008 financial crisis would bring about a spate of 40 analysis. He published the New York Times bestseller Meltdown. A free market look at why the stock market collapsed, the economy tanked, and the government bailouts will make things even worse. With great clarity he shows that the Austrian theory of the cycle is firmly grounded in common sense. Additionally, he shows that the Austrian theory explains not only the Great Depression, but other less well-known economic downturns as well. When the government fought the hands of policy, recovery from a downturn was rapid. When, as most notably was the case, in the New Deal, the government tried to take control, then the economy sputtered. Tom has done more than most people to advance the libertarian cause not just in the United States, but all over the world. It is no exaggeration to say that Tom Woods is the most popular libertarian alive. Oh, that cannot be true. That cannot possibly be true. It's completely untrue. His books have been translated into Italian, Spanish, Polish, German, Dutch, Czech, Portuguese, Croatian, Slovak, and so on, and even Japanese and Chinese. For his assiduous efforts, he has been most deservedly esteemed. Tom won first prize of the prestigious Temple Millionaire Enterprise Awards in 2006, awarded by the Intercollegiate Studies and Prizes of uh, the George Mason University. So, Barbara said, I shall not speak two hours, so I have to shorten all the prizes you win. But we know there are a lot of prizes. 
Tom is one of those rare minds that can synthesize an abundance of information and present it without ostentation, but with wit and clarity. Yeah. Referring to meltdown, to this superbook, Bob Murphy once remarked that, now I cite, Tom is just a wonderful writer. I periodically put the book down and just image of thousands of people reading the same paragraph I just read. And I think, wow, that is so great that Tom just shot that into so many minds. Awesome. He's right. <laughs> Now, very interesting. Tom has done extensive work to build a bridge between libertarian ideas and Christianity. With his book, How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization and the Church and the Market, a Catholic Defense of the Free Economy. We are reminded, with Professor Woods, that the earliest universities in Europe fostered a dialogue between faith and reason, along with logic and theory and the spirit of investigation. Perhaps this is the greatest secret of Western civilization over the past four centuries. It is my cherished hope, said the cardinal, that this book will serve to unlock this hidden mystery. Let's finish. Tom's lectures and articles on his conversion from neocon supporter to anti-war libertarian also stand out. When Randolph Byrne said, war is the health of the state, he said humanity could learn a lot from Woods teaching when he says war is always the wrong answer. For his warnings against excessive government intervention and the insights given in his best seller mentor, we are honored to award Tom Ward the 2019 Hayek Lifetime Achievement Award. Tom W.A. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, thank you all very much. That is this is quite an honor. I am delighted and pleased, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, to uh, have a few minutes to address you, to express my thanks to the Austrian Economic Center and all the sponsors and all the good supporters in this room. This may seem melodramatic, but I would actually like to say a word thanking my parents, without whom there would be no need. And I'd like to thank particularly Bob Murphy, my colleague, who saw us record the program today. Bob and I have had some crazy adventures over the years, and it's, it's great to work alongside him and to be associated with him. He's so darn smart. But I want to say in particular, Bob played a particularly important role here in contributing to my receiving this award. Um, mainly by not being quite good enough to win it himself and thereby keeping the door open for me to win. So, thank you, Bob. Now, Barbara has made quite clear that I am to speak briefly. I'm going to claim my 10 minutes, but no, no, no more than that. No, that is not true, five are already gone. They're going to have to get the hook out and take me off the stage, if that's the case. I mean, I'm the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award. I think I get the 10, get the 10 minutes. <laughs> I have a feeling of immense power in front of this audience for some reason tonight. So oh, it is true that over the course of my career, I, I think I've done some original work, particularly in the area of Catholic social teaching. And it's been gratifying to see the sorts of arguments I've made about that reflected now in the scholarly literature and in popular articles. But I've also spent my time popularizing some of the more technical ideas of the Austrian tradition so the general public can absorb them. And Ludwig von Mises always said that it was not enough to persuade other scholars, you have to reach the general public. 
So let me take the balance of my time just to say something about the attractiveness of the vision of society that is at least implied in Austrian economics. Austrian economics, economics is value-free, Mises was fond of saying, but it describes for us how society functions through voluntary interaction. And so if you care about the welfare of mankind, then you would indeed want to follow where the Austrian school appears to lead you, namely, a society of voluntary interaction. So, for example, one of the central insights of economics is that we have cause and effect relationships, not just in the physical world, but in society as well. So if you have an economy based on the division of labor, it's going to be more productive than an autarkic economy. If you increase the supply of money, then prices will rise higher than they would have been in the absence of the increase. If an increase in the price of a good will, will yield a lower quantity demanded of that good than if the price had not changed. These are regularities, these are laws. And Mises emphasized that these relationships hold at all times and in all places and apply to all people. So he was speaking universally. He was not speaking to German speakers, he was not speaking to Europeans, he was speaking to the world. Also, what we learn is how society functions without coercion. That is to say, these economic phenomena like prices and interest rates and the whole structure of production, all of this emerges without central direction. There's nobody with a bullhorn shouting out commands at everyone in society. And yet, this extraordinary lattice work of stages of production and capital and integration of, of, of labor and capital all over the world occurs spontaneously without central direction. That's an astonishing insight of the social sciences because it runs counter to what you would think. You would think that the most efficient approach would be to have a guy in charge of everything. You people produce this and you produce that and you produce this in this quantity using this method in this location. How could it be that people just voluntarily interacting with each other could be more efficient than that? And yet it is. And to the contrary, although you would think it would be more orderly if we had one person issuing commands to everyone, that yields nothing but chaos and disintegration. Because as Mises showed in his work on the socialist calculation problem, if the state owns the means of production, there's no price formation in the means of production. And therefore, we cannot evaluate different courses of action in ways that allow us to determine which one makes economic sense and which one is ludicrously and destructively uneconomic. We can't compare outcomes. We can't compare this production process to that one. So we're operating completely in the dark, being extremely wasteful and destroying the economy. In fact, you can't have an economy without prices in the means of production. And that means you can't have an economy without private property in the means of production. So if Marxism were ever to be fully implemented on a global scale, we would revert to barbarism, is what Mises said. So therefore, since we value the welfare of mankind, we prefer not to revert to barbarism. So an implication of Austrian economics, therefore, is don't have collective ownership of the means of production. Likewise, the Austrian theory of the business cycle, which was the key message of my book, Melton, says that intervention into the peaceful determination of interest rates yields you artificial booms that culminate in busts. So again, if we value the welfare of mankind, we will take this insight and add to it, we better not do that. We should leave the determination of interest rates to the free market. But the key, most beautiful insight of all of sound economics is that what we have is a world not of strife, not of inherent conflict, but of harmonious interests. Frederick Bastiat talked about economic harmonies. So for example, David Ricardo talked about the law of comparative advantage, that even if you have two countries where one country is better than the other one in the production of everything, it still makes sense for them to trade with each other. And Mises extrapolated from that into what he called the law of association. He said this applies not just to countries, but to individuals. Even if we have two people, one of whom is better than the other one at everything, it is still in their interest to trade. 
So we have harmonies, not warfare with one another, but harmonies. And this runs counter to what we've been taught for centuries by what we might call pessimistic schools of thought. So Thomas Malthus warned of a population catastrophe, and that implied a conflict between individuals already born and the alleged excess who were supposed to follow later. Then we had the mercantilists, and they looked at trade and exchange as being a kind of low-intensity warfare with winners and losers. And then, of course, Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto sets forth a vision of inherent class antagonism on the market. But we see economic harmonies. We don't favor a wealth tax that pits the rich against the poor, because that would require them to liquidate the very capital that improves our standard of living and makes labor more productive and therefore leads to higher wages. We are not by nature at war with each other. Capital accumulation benefits everyone, especially the poor. Private property in the means of production benefits everyone, especially the poor. Conflict enters this picture only with the coercive violence of the state. And it's interesting to note that in Murray Rothbard's book, Man, Economy, and State, he walks through step by step the development of an edifice of economic thought, and only at the end does he introduce violent intervention. It is possible to conceive of this beautiful latticework of exchange in the absence of this coercive violence. It occurs spontaneously through the interaction of free individuals. So therefore, the implicit message of the Austrian School of Economics is that the voluntary cooperation of all peoples everywhere generates extraordinary results. That is a message for the 21st century and for all centuries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, that's our episode for today. That was a real thrill, and I thought you might get a kick out of hearing that. I guess uh, maybe if you've been listening regularly, you'll remember that I told you about my travel schedule such that I think it's just not possible. I would have to kill myself to get an episode out on Monday, November 18th. So I'm going to take that day off as a bit of a recuperation day. I'll be preparing the next day's episode. We'll get right back on schedule after that. But this really is a once in a lifetime thing. Although the organizer joked with me that if I kept on working, maybe I could win another Lifetime Achievement Award. I mean, after all, people get two life sentences. Maybe you could win two Lifetime Achievement Awards, but I think it is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So, you know, I hope you'll excuse the lack of one episode next week. But that's it, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next week. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.